Good afternoon, everyone. If you can help me, at what, uh, which verse uh, did we pause yesterday? Thank you. 
Thirteenth. <laughs> Thank you. Eleven. Okay. Today we are continuing from uh, we are continuing the third chapter of the Buddhajaya Avatara text, and um, uh, so far we have more or less uh, completed the. Uh, preparatory phase, one could say, in order to establish, in order to adopt, in order to generate the bodhicitta. And that preparation, um, preparatory phase consists of accumulating immense merit, immense wisdom as a foundation. And on top of that, uh, then um, the foundation is, um, one could say that the foundation is suitable to generate bodhicitta. Uh, so later um, we will come across um, defining what is bodhicitta and uh, according to the Shantideva's uh, way or style, uh, the definition of um, bodhicitta um, will be explained. Uh, from a scholarly point of view, um, there are, um, one could say, a few number of uh, ways of defining bodhicitta. Um, bodhicitta is a Sanskrit word and that describes uh, the attitude or the mind of the bodhisattvas. That's a very um, practical way of describing what is bodhicitta. Um, in Tibetan known as Chanchub um, Sem. Uh, and um, Beginning scholars uh, take years actually to actually, years meaning not just a few years but most of their lives um, to understand what this means by means of um, uh, intellectual studies and meditation. As I said yesterday, um, the things that is described um, in the teachings of the Buddha, the historical Buddha Shakyamuni, um, can be only understood, um, can be only realized, can be only identified uh, if we uh, give time. If we give time, meaning just being patient and waited out, but more in terms of uh, giving time in terms of um, uh, through both uh, intellect as well as through um, um, 
well, in short, I can just simply say meditation. Although meditation is a um, general general term uh, to interpret the Tibetan word gom, gompa, but um, it's 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 too general. So therefore, we don't know the head or tail of it. That's the thing. So it is done. Uh, it can be the buddhicitta can be understood. Or the teachings of the Buddhas can be understood uh, if you um, give enough time, actually, uh, both through intellect and meditation. Otherwise, um, it cannot be comprehended just through sheer, um, uh, just through sheer, um, um, graduation, one could say, as I said yesterday. Not that I'm using this time to promote uh, this institute, uh, but nevertheless, as you've seen, many of you have seen from the introduction of this institute, uh, one of the things that we try to promote here um, is that um, it's not just a place where you can graduate academically and then understand and realize Buddhism and after a few years of graduation you reach a certain path or a certain bumi and <laughs> and then if you spend maybe a certain number of years maybe then gradually towards the end and then reach enlightenment and so on um, but this place, uh, uh, this environment, what it tries to promote is that um, it tries to uh, adopt with the modern forms of education uh, according to the academic style so that um, we ourselves um, find the means to also um, benefit others in short yes not just to learn something for ourselves not just to graduate but to benefit others and it's simultaneous because there is the traditional aspects of the course such as the meditation course and so on but all in all what it tries to include the best possible way although it may not be complete in many ways but still, what it tries to emphasize, what this tr environment tries to, emph uh, to emphasize is the importance of both intellect and meditation. Of course, uh, the actual meditation can only take place uh, in your own comfort, in your own zone, at your own home, wherever you are. Um, it's not the place. Um, it's not a particular place. It's wherever you are. But from here, uh, when the environment tries to implement a seed, a seed to show the importance of both intellect and meditation. So through that, then hopefully we will all gain a sense of understanding that, that both are needed in order to grow uh, something organic. And uh, I try to sort of um, say this word organic and mechanic from time to time. Um, based on the one of the examples, actually classical examples of the bodhicitta. Um, I'm not quite well versed with the exact translation of the Paksam Shing, uh, which is a Tibetan word. It is basically a, supposed to be um, uh, almost like a fantastical tree, fantastic tree where it grants uh, all wishes. It's like a wish-fulfilling uh, jewel. <coughs> One could say wish-fulfilling tree. Uh, having said that, um, uh, the memory of white tree of Gondor came into mind. <laughs> uh, so basically it's a, um, there must have been a, a literal sense in the ancient times, 
uh, when the merit of uh, the sentient beings were great, that they were actually such uh, physical, uh, there was such a physical tree. But nowadays uh, we can relate to it on a, on a, metaf a metaphorical uh, base. Metaphorical base. And um, so it takes time to grow this tree, one could say. It takes time to grow this bodhicitta. Therefore it needs nurturing. Um, therefore, um, if you understand a little bit of that, then we will have a little idea uh, about what is bodhicitta in a way. That it takes time. And um, yesterday during the presentation, uh, one of our members of this uh, establishment said, it's very stressful, you know. <laughs> It's not very much the case. It is stressful. <laughs> I could feel that the expression, the facial expression and everything, he said it genuinely. You know? <laughs> Although he was sitting in the comfort of the garden and lying there, he said, it's so stressful, he said. But beside the joke, um, it takes time. Uh, it, it, it could be defined um, in terms of um, it takes nurturing, it takes patience. Um, one could almost say it takes our being in a way. Um, so therefore, uh, we have to be honest with ourselves. If as in the English way of saying, if it is really our cup of tea, in a way. Um, that um, if it is, um, if it, in case if it is not, I'm just saying, uh, in case if it is not, um, we should be honest with ourselves. But if we are, uh, if we are motivated, then we should know that it, it requires a lot from us and that it's not just a cakewalk, as they say. I'm not exactly sure, but the now we will begin from the eleventh verse, from the third chapter. And now one of one of the translation reads, "Without any sense of loss, I shall give up my body and enjoyments, as well as all my virtues of the three times, for the sake of all." Benefiting all, uh, for the sake of benefiting all. By being, by giving up all, sorrow is transcended and my mind will realize the sorrow, sorrowless state. It is best that I now give everything to all sentient beings in the same way as I shall at death. Having given this body up for the pleasures of all living beings by killing, abusing, and beating it, may they always do as they please. Although they may play with my body and make it a source of jest and reproach, because I have given it up to them, what is the use of holding it dear? Therefore, 
I shall not let them do anything to it that does not cause them any harm. And when anyone encounters me, may it never be meaningless for them. <coughs> Another translation reads, surrendering everything in Nirvana, and my mind seeks Nirvana. If I must surrender everything, it is better that I give it to sentient beings. For the sake of all beings, I have made this body pleasureless. Let them continually beat it, revile it, and cover it with filth. Let them play with my body, let them laugh at it, and ridicule it. What does it matter to me? I have given my body to them. Let them have me perform deeds that are conducive to their happiness. Whosoever resorts to me may never be in vain. Um, oh yes. Dark Lula Zijetam Chundrika Shijujan, Dark Lundi Chinsenjin, the Kate Chishikja, Telan Nubur Minjurvi, Legan Yimba and Chetuchu. Dala Mina Nando Yang, Gayan, Teme Majorchi, Dala Mina Kandak, Trom, Tebe Sanjongwa, Teni Tado Tedak, Tengendrupe, Jujurchi. Kanda Dala Kazaram, Jinda Nubajiba, Tijin Chalkaton Yarong, Tamji Chanchuk, Kalden Juru. After the dedication, um, a verse from yesterday. Uh, afterwards, there were, um, I think, three or four verses that explains uh, to what exactly uh, we should dedicate to. And then from there onwards, uh, now the uh, verses that I've read so far, they more or less mean or decipher the, um, uh, what do you call it? Yes, in English uh, translation called the mind training, in t uh, Tibetan known as Lojong. And uh, this becomes uh, a very important part uh, for all practitioners, be it a beginner or uh, a veteran. Um, the Lojong becomes um, a very essential part of the practice. It is a classical way of uh, classical path for all practitioners until they reach enlightenment. And it has been classical for uh, many, many centuries in the past. Um, and there is no reason why such classical method should not be uh, utilized now. So, um, as these verses read that, um, uh, because now, I have understood uh, through sheer understanding the uh, benefit uh, which is described in the, mainly in the first chapter of the, um, this uh, text, uh, first chapter of the Buddha Jaya Avatara text, and that uh, having realized the benefit of generating bodhicitta and also realizing the second chapter which is about what are the main uh, negativities? What are the main obstacles? Uh, of course, the name of the chapter is described as uh, basically the chapter of purification, um, meaning probably the question is, what do we purify? So therefore, the puri uh, what do we pur the things that we purify um, is or are, and none other than uh, Pleasure in karma, uh, or afflictive emotions, and uh, causality, or causal um, causal points, causal basis, causal nature, and so having uh, understood that, um, or having a glimpse of that, having brushed through that, then uh, we are able to train our mind now, basically. 
are able to train our mind um, to um, constantly um, make our mind able. Um, the Tibetan term that I have in mind is les uh, rongwa. Les um, rongwa basically means, um, well, the last time I used uh, a few English words to describe that, able, to, be, uh, to make it appliable, to make it able, to make it flexible. I'm sure there are better words. And um, the focus of the mind training is to make basically our mind able. That's the whole, that's the whole point. Um, um, for example, for an athlete to be able to jump a, a certain number of meters, you have to make your physical state able, yes, flexible, so that you can reach your goal. Similarly, in order to reach the goal of, uh, in terms of uh, generating bodhicitta, true, gen true uh, bodhicitta, the enlightened mind, we need our mind to be flexible, to be able. Uh, otherwise, it just a b becomes um, uh, a, f a fantastic notion, something to be admired, but nothing more. So, what we really want is we want to get involved. Uh, we want to understand it. We want to uh, become intimate, actually, basically. And so, therefore, in order to do so, first thing is first. Of course, um, <coughs> according to the Mm -hmm. uh, according to uh, some of the uh, precious teachings, it says that in order to become intimate, in order to become um, uh, close with bodhicitta, first we must uh, sort of ask the question, uh, do we need to become flexible? Why? That we need these, these questions in a way. And if we ask those questions, then we will realize simply the fact that if our body, or in this case, our mind, if it is flexible or not. And upon that understanding, uh, then we can do what we need to do. So if it is not flexible, then we must acquire the means to make it flexible. And so for that, then we basically train our mind. Of course, actually the method of training the mind is already it already begins from the first chapter till now, and it goes all the way till the last. Basically, all six parameters or the six perfections that are introduced in this uh, um, in this uh, um, composition, let's say, the Buddhajaya Avatara, um, it describes the whole structure in in a way. Although I say that. Bodhicitta is organic, but nevertheless, the composition, the, um, the teachings, or the Buddha Dharma, whatever we call it, <coughs> the words of Buddha, uh, it has a mechanic structure, that's for sure. So it's not extreme in a way. That certainly doesn't mean that uh, uh, we become uh, in one with the nature so that we can do away uh, with, uh, um, uh, with, with, with decency, let's say, and become suddenly wild like animals, you know, and live in the jungles. Um, in order to reach that, st uh, that uh, unaltered state, which is another way to define the bodhicitta, uh, if we are not flexible enough right now, then we must uh, rely on a certain form of mechanic or mechanism uh, to, um, to make it flexible. So therefore the six perfections that is described here are very much um, described in a, in, a metric, uh, in, in a mechanic way. So therefore there is a beginning, there is a middle, there is an end. And so the whole um, composition um, is uh, uh, it has its own mechan uh, uh, mechanic uh, <coughs> nature. So we, um, 
since our goal uh, since our goal is to generate bodhicitta to make it to make our mind applicable we depend on realizing the benefit as a first step and then uh, recognizing the obstacles and so therefore through that structure through that formula we we are already making very flexible already and so then uh, through this third chapter and then we will realize uh, basically the introduction of the bodhicitta is there the formula uh, the the way uh, is described but one must one thing that we must keep in mind is that uh, although now there is a sort of a built up of course uh, of saying it is like this and like that we we might feel a little bit sort of anxious uh, as to sort of maybe now the um in the, in the last few verses there is something amazing something amazing is about to happen and so therefore we expect a lot and then suddenly we read and there's just very simple words that we heard over and over again in the last uh, how many number of years suddenly no oh, there's nothing you know so one might become disappointed so therefore one mustn't um <coughs> and be uh, compelled by the anxiousness of uh, one's habit because uh, although uh, the um, the truth is spoken uh, in 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 the third chapter itself what is bodhicitta what kind of uh, bodhicitta is described in here and nevertheless and because it's so simple uh, that's something that i say from time to time because the truth is so simple that we become disappointed uh because we are so used to uh, uh complicated um scenarios complicated methods that if you if if it's something valuable uh, our natural habit right now our natural tendency right now is to think that if it's something valuable it must be deep it must be elaborate it must be complicated and if it is not then it must not be or at least we become doubtful so therefore uh, we mustn't be um um compelled over the top um by the sheer simplicity so therefore uh, one must know that um that there is, that the, although the truth is spoken already or shown already in the third chapter um in order to immerse ourselves with again the same uh um bodhicitta um that we need to f- uh, continue with the following chapters in order to get a better understanding in some ways i'm saying come back next year you know <laughs> so now <clears throat> uh in the mind training uh context um one thing we have to know is that um when we come across a spirituality in general particularly buddhism uh we might sometimes from or from time to time we might feel that um some sense of um I know it's not the right word but some sense of repulsiveness to be honest with sort of repulsive uh, habit why because um it talks about dukkha first of all and dukkha is something that we uh, have a hard time actually relating to um actually it's not just um well since our audience here is mainly western it's not just a western thing it's it's uh, also uh, meaning it's not exclusive it's 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 not also uh, exclusive to to easterns as well it's a uh, it's not even a global in a way it's a 
it's, it's part of um, human nature, one could say. Although um, we use the word human nature a lot, but uh, we don't really know what it means actually sometimes. Mm, the way I understand it, uh, well, in the beginning, uh, when I heard the, the term human nature, it sounded very nice. And uh, I used to use the word a lot, and, uh, but after some time, then I began to doubt. <laughs> when you understand, uh, when, you, when you learn more of the, uh, the, the definitions and, and the, what is it? Um, the connotations of it, then it was strange. But nevertheless, uh, now I'm using the word human nature quite freely. Because you know it's uh, it's actually quite genuine. It's 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 very it's a good word to describe our current state, current state of the human existence. Meaning, it doesn't say really say something positive or negative. It just states what kind of state we are in right now. You know, and uh, it is full of uh, confusion. Actually, it is uh, full of doubts, and at the same time. There is a mixture, there is a blend of virtues and goodness and so on. So it's a very strange, uh, it's like a cappuccino, one could say, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's not completely coffee, it's <laughs> not completely milk, you know? There is a bit of sugar in there, so, yeah. <laughs> and so therefore, um, it's, it's, it's a good way to describe uh, our current state, human nature. And um, so, what, um, well, coming back to the point now. <laughs> coming back to the point, uh, which is the uh, mind training. Mm. Uh, the human nature is, uh, well, actually, I completely lost the train of my thoughts now. <laughs> Where was I actually? Sorry, dukkha, yes, very good, dukkha. Um, we become uh, repulsed um, from time to time because uh, it describes about dukkha. And um, the kind of courage that requires in terms of um, um, engaging in this path is that uh, we have to somehow add a, add a pinch of salt, as they say, uh, when we try to understand, when we try to comprehend the notion of dukkha. Uh, otherwise, it becomes, um, uh, it becomes a hindrance, basically. But if you are able to somehow add a pinch of salt, add a, bi add a pinch of spice and so on, mm, which are in some ways can be described as uh, you know, certain forms of patience, one could say, then uh, we can actually um, digest, we can actually um, well, intake the, the content. Mm. And, uh, there is a very good um, uh, quotation or a Lung, one could say, from the, what is it, uh, from the Mahayana Sutra Alankara. I know it's a mouthful, it's a mouthful word, but nevertheless, it's a tongue twister also. But nevertheless, it's a, it's a text, um, um, it's basically not, a, not just a text, but it's basically a teaching uh, that was uh, uh, given by the uh, Bodhisattva. Uh, Mitriya, from the Tushita uh, realm, one could say, to the uh, historical uh, Mahayana um, philosopher, scholar, um, tradition bringer called Asanga. And uh, there are a number of uh, uh, what is known as treaties or teachings, and one of them happens to be this uh, Mahayana. Sutra Alankara. And in there, 
Um, in, I think in English it is translated sometimes as uh, the great, the what is it, um, the sutra of the great vehicle or something. So in the in the in the very f uh, first few pages, it uh, already describes um, the the content of the text, which is of course about bodhicitta at the end. And uh, in there. Um, there's a very interesting analogy uh, that says that, um, of course, according to the Maitriyana's way of teaching, is the saying that uh, um, yeah, the uh, analogy that uh, sentient beings who uh, are still in samsara are, are, uh, are like the patients, and those who can provide the help or the support are like doctors. And the teaching or the method, the remedy, <coughs> the teaching is like the remedy, it's like the medicine. So according to that analogy, according to that logic, uh, the poetic way of sort of describing it is that, uh, um, describing the, the therapy is that it says, <coughs> um, medicine at first is not um, <coughs> pleasing to one's uh, senses in terms of its smell, in terms of its taste, and so on. But nevertheless, um, um, if, you, if you do take it, uh, if, if you do sort of, uh, with courage, if you, if you do take it, that it actually soothes the body, it soothes the mind. And in fact, it really, it is a cure, it is a remedy, it is, a, one of, it is, a, it is an actual remedy. Similarly, like with all medicines, because that, you know, Medicines are never delicious. They are, they are, they are never, how to say, sweet. Uh, similarly, the teaching itself here is also not sweet. Uh, for example, when we talk about dukkha, then uh, according to our human nature, it's not sweet. It's not delicious. But nevertheless, um, if you take it with courage, which is like a pinch of salt, then it can actually uh, it can actually benefit, in short. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, now having said all that, one of the one of the main things that, uh, or one of the first things that the Lojong actually talks about is, actually, uh, it focuses on our physical body. Uh, and according to Buddha's teachings in general, um, the body is uh, from someone, uh, well, from 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 a, from a meditator, one could say from a, well, the term that you all are familiar with, yogis, you know. <laughs> um, basically, meditator, from their point of view, and they're like a scientist, let's say, in some ways, that they are focused on something. And uh, um, they are focused on, on, purely on what is, um, what is dukkha. So basically, two more two things: one that is the cause of uh, the cause of dukkha, and what is the actual dukkha. So therefore, um, our physical body becomes a, a, the, the main target, the main object. And so therefore, that itself becomes again. It may present some sense of repulsive uh, um, feeling from our side, meaning that. From a meditator's point of view, the, the physical body is seen as a result of uh, karma and klesha. And therefore, it's changing, it's impermanent, uh, it provides so many challenges, headaches, heartaches. So therefore, it is seen as um, um, basically negative, in a way, in short. It equals negative from a scientific point of view. It is calculate and it's negative. And so therefore, <coughs> since they see that it's, it is negative in many ways, of course now, 
the compassion comes there now and, and, and then uh, what the compassion does is that it tries to make something from nothing or something from nothing, to turn something from nothing is probably much easier than turning something useless into something useful. You know. So in this case then uh, the compassion <coughs> then tries to turn this physical body into something useful now. Yes. So it's with that logic through that sheer simple logic that a meditator then w will use uh, or we rely on compassion, we rely on love, we rely on care, we rely on loving kindness to uh, utilize this, f uh, f uh, this one could say mortal or f basically physical uh, materialistic form into something useful. So how do they do this is basically described in these uh, few verses that I read that although it brings uh, tons of trouble, nevertheless, uh, well, tons of trouble in the forms of becomes a target for others who do not understand the truth to attack, yes? Out of anger, out of attachment, out of uh, uh, lack of awareness, uh, out of jealousy, out of envy. So therefore, it is a target, yes? Everything. So physical meaning not just uh, what you see, but uh, what you hear, what you can feel, what you can, basically the five aggregates. So the very uh, result, the very sort of apparent result that we can see right here, right now, sort of like a target for others. So therefore, it becomes a form of hindrance for a practitioner when they are actually trying to achieve something absolute. So, therefore now, they must find a means to, to change that, to overcome that. And the best way is to offer this now, to dedicate this to others. So that's the main, I think, emphasize of the mind training. So, therefore now, uh, if you have that kind of um, attitude, then if or should there be any kind of criticism, uh, attacks, uh, implications,